You're so cute. I don't know where, where to start, really. Where should we start, Olive? We don't know where to start, so, hi. I almost forgot. Get your drink. Hey guys, Chevy Rell here. Uh, this is episode 32, which I don't think I normally say at the beginning of episodes. I don't know. This is the Chevy Rell Stuff Podcast. This is the stuff room that we're in. This is Olive. For those of you who have not met Olive, she is our little old lady pug. Ditto's been getting some airtime lately and everybody was wondering where Olive was. So I, as you can see, she wants to hit it. I thought that I'd, uh, let her say hello to all you. I know she has some some friends in the in the podcast world. I'll put her down now. Say bye, Olive. So boys. So I'm gonna start out with our last episode or my last episode. Dan is not always for uh, the new viewers with me. He co-hosts sometimes when he's feeling social. <laughs> The last episode I said I was gonna put a timestamp in so you didn't have to listen to my like blathering story about the bird and I I completely forgot. So you kinda had to figure it out on your own. Mm, my bad. This is Thursday, but it's sort of like my Friday because Dan and I took a vacation day. Tomorrow, for all you OGs who know Mama Jean, which new viewers will meet Mama Jean, or there are Mama Jean episodes, maybe I'll tag one of those. But it's her mom, Grandma Burt's 100th birthday tomorrow. So we are going to see her, and Mama Jean is making lunch at the farm, so we're gonna go home and do that. I will get to cuddle on baby Cole, so I'm pretty excited. It's a Paloma day. I've been kind of boring just because I have the stuff to make Palomas, so that's what I've been making. I have wanted a dirty martini, but I'm out of olives. I need to buy olives. I want good olives. You can get blue cheese stuffed olive, like jar blue cheese stuffed olives at the store, and that's what I normally get, but I would like some like bougie blue cheese stuffed olives. And I thought about buying olives and stuffing them myself because that's what they do at the Hootie Hoo restaurants, and they're real good. But yeah, I totally haven't done that. Let's get on to the stuff, what do you say? I have a couple of FOs. My first FO is the Lullaby Line Baby Nest by Peekaboo Patterns. Yeah, Peekaboo Patterns. You guys, isn't it cute? Okay, so here again, I'm not really a sewer of things. There's polyfill in here, and as you can see, it is lumpy and bumpy but I really don't think Cole is gonna mind. Cole is my nephew who was born late April and this is the newborn size. The pattern comes in many sizes. It's cheap, it is a paid for pattern, but I can't remember how much it was. It was like $5 or something. You sewed the bottom and quilted it. You stuffed this. There's this thing that I did I, I don't know any of these terms, so you guys, I don't know. One fun thing though, it has snaps. Check it out, I got to hammer some shit because that's how you, you get snaps, you just hammer it. It's kind of cool because this is so awkward, isn't it? So these snaps come off, okay? And then there's a cord and you tie it and it comes apart. So if you wanted to flatten it out, you can. Ta -da. So that if you don't want it as nesty, does that make sense? No, eh, I, you get it, right? So I'm gonna give that to Cole. It's not meant to be like slept in or as a bed or it's, I'm thinking that it will be perfect for Logan to like lay Cole on, like on the bed while she's folding laundry or something bring it out to our house when they spend the night or whatever. I'm sure Cole will lay in it a little bit anyway. Here's the other thing about this. Let me put it back together real quick because I feel like now that I've torn it all apart, it's way cuter as a nest. I'm not quite sure why you would want to wear it flat. Wear it flat. Use it flat. But who knows? What do I know? Now, this for those of you who are interested in this pattern and actually are sewers of things, 
Uh, it starts out at newborn and it actually goes up to, I believe, toddler. And they show it as they can like lay in their little nest on the floor to watch their movies. And this is a little, you know, they can use this as a pillow or whatever. I just thought it was super cute. But if Cole doesn't like it, it can totally double as a dog bed. I mean, Olive, look at this cuteness. And and this fabric is totally scraps. So it's it's not perfect. You can see like my lines are all crooked. Meh. That's my first FO. Wait until you see my second FO. Mm. I get my hair done next week, y'all. I was just having this conversation with my friend Tara. She's like, I've never noticed your roots. I'm like, oh, they're there. <laughs> My uh, glitter that's growing totally distracted me. It's my superpower, y'all. I grow glitter. How about you? Any of you have any guesses what my FO is? What my other FO is? Uh-huh. Do you, do you? Uh-huh, do you? Maybe? Maybe a little bit? I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Let's, let's start with a little recap, shall we? This is where I want to do that. What is that? Is that Scooby-Doo? <laughs> Finally cast on my Susu. This is the Susu pattern. This is what I have so far. There is what the, well, hey, I'm a dumbass and showing you the back. How about I show you the front of it? Is this better? <laughs> so this pattern calls for DK. I am using Plucky Solo in the deep dish colorway, and that is 475 yards, 8020 superwash merino and silk. And I'm holding it double because Solo is a fingering. This is so much fun. It's sort of a slower knit just because it's a double moss, which I'm not giving anything away. You can see that if you look at it, but I really am enjoying it. And that texture just makes me happy. Look at these, at these panels right here. They look lopsided to me. Like you can't, very professional. You, the yarn overs right here. Like see there's two yarn overs, right? This yarn over, however I'm knitting, let me stretch it out. I feel like it's super there. It looks better. So I'm hoping that... That shit will block right out. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> but you know, I'm holding fingering double, right? Right? Ah, you know me and my ball sacks. Thanks, Roberta, Steel City. Go get yourself some. I do have to tell you, I had a knot. Not only did it suck because I was 150 stitches in when I got to it, but it hung up somewhere, like it made the inside of my ball messed up somehow. Like it, it pulled something up and behind something and it was a knotted mess and I had yarn barf. Which, thankfully, I had a ball sack, so it didn't get into the other one, but we're past that, we're past that. It's all good. It's been a very, very long time since I've come to a knot. There is an industry standard, I believe, that you can have a knot for every, like, so many yards. Moral of the story, you hit a speed bump, you suck it up, buttercup, back your way out because it's super wash and you can't spit splice, and you cut the knot out and you move on because life's too short. Next is my susu here is my susu this is my nitty by nature from melissa stitch marker right here and that's how much i've knit since the last time you've seen it on my last podcast you guys may or may not remember i mentioned that i was having this issue with my yarn overs i don't know if you remember so these are your, if you stretch this out, sorry, I'm not very good at this. If you stretch this out, this is a row of yarn overs, but because, so it's supposed to be yarn over and then this thing and then yarn over. 
these are almost non-existent. And I said that they, you know, I was hoping that they'd block out. Well, then a viewer mentioned, which isn't she brilliant or he, I don't know who it is. It's, um, I, I went back to look it up and they don't have any subscribers on YouTube and it's just like a screen name. It's not their name name. So thank you, whoever you are. You know, I always put my yarn in my mouth. So there's nothing here, right? And then you can start to see them right here. Well, that's about where I read her comment. Duh. So when you're going through, you do a yarn over, you do a yarn over, and then it's like a bunch of stuff, but the yarn's in the front like pearl-wise, and then you do a yarn over. So on the front way, you have to like do a double wrap, whereas on the front way, I'm so bad at explaining things. On the first yarn over, you have to do a double wrap to get the yarn over, right? Then you do your pearly thing. Well, then your yarn's in front. So I was just knitting the next stitch. So it was actually tighter. And she said, go back around the other way so that the first yarn over and the second yarn over have both the same amount. Like, I know that that probably doesn't make any sense, but maybe it will for you. I It, it was like this light bulb went off in my head and I'm like, why did I not think of that? So now I've been going the opposite way on the second yarn over so that the tension of both of them are the same. And I think it's gonna be way better. There's more than one way to do a yarn over, people. Next up is my Susu. I don't even know why I'm showing this to you because it's silly. This is the back and this is where I was the last time. There it is. I worked on my Susu, you guys. It got some love. That's gorgeous. I have, th this is the back. I did put it on longer needles since you saw it. I've gotten, it looks like two whole repeats done. My next whip is my Susu. This masterpiece of textured awesomeness is double moss stitch, which texture wise is amazing. Knit wise, is very slow. This is definitely a process. No, Pro progress. Process and progress, what is it? Process knit, there's a process knit and a, why am I blanking on that? Process? Product, wow. That took way too long. I blamed the tequila last weekend. I had way too much, oh my God amazing though. This is a product knit. I want it done. I want to wear the damn thing. It's so slow but gorgeous and beautiful and I cannot wait to wear it. I got the back done. Now the last time y'all saw it this is gonna be hard to, hard to show. I was here so I got all that done. Now look at the top of this. Isn't that weird? I've never seen, I feel like I did something wrong. The majority of people I saw that knit this, they knit it in the smallest size. This is meant to have crazy positive ease, 20 inches of positive ease. I was freaking out that my gauge was off and it was too big, but my gauge isn't off, it's spot on. I'm doing the medium. Now, one other gal on Ravelries looked like this with these little ledges. There isn't a schematic on, on the pattern. I do kind of like the schematic because when this happens, I know if I messed it up or not. <laughs> when I piece it together, if it looks weird or something, I... I don't know. I'll fudge it. I'll make it work. I'm not doing the ends or anything. I'll figure it out but I am a little perplexed and nervous that it's wrong. I did start the front part and I've gotten this far, but at least I feel like I'm getting somewhere with it. Okay, next I'm going to talk about a couple fails. My Susu sweater, I feel guilty about. It's not a, it's not a fail, I just mean that I failed to do any knitting on it. The back piece, which is finished and everything, is laying right here in the same spot it was the last time I guys showed you. I have not knit anything on it, and I am going to make a point 
to knit on it. It's one of those things I've said before, it is a product knit, not a process knit. Double moss stitch is, I, uh, I was going to say unenjoyable. It's not unenjoyable, it's just slow. So you feel like you've knit for a long time, but you're not seeing the results, especially when the piece is this wide and there's umpteen stitches on it. The Susu, <laughs> you guys, this sweater. Here's my issue with the Susu. Let me just show you. For all of you, for all of those of you, which is what I normally say, for those of you who have been watching for a while, you know that I've, I don't even know when I started this sweater, but it is taking me forever. It never takes me this long to finish a sweater, ever. I usually pump them out because I want to wear them. I want to wear this sweater. It is double moss stitch or double seed stitch, whatever you call it. It is a slog. It's not hard, it's just not any fun. I can't remember where I was the last time you guys saw this. I want to say I was like there maybe. I have not knit very far, but this is why I haven't knit very far. I picked it up on the last episode. I said, I'm gonna make a point to try and knit on this. I mean, look at how long, how many stitches this is. It's gorgeous. The texture is amazing. So I picked it up because I was going to make a point. First off, I don't wanna start another sweater until I get this one done because I know me and what will happen is this will super languish for a long time. And I want it finished because I wanna wear it. Then I find myself like angsty knitting, like I'm mad at it while I'm knitting it, and then I F up, which is exactly what I did here. I got it out one night, I knit like three rows, and then realized that I forgot to twist a cable and had to rip back three rows, knit the same three rows, actually it might've been four rows, and an entire evening, because serious, double moss stitch, I'd rather hold my, my hand over a candle. I mean, I'm to that point with this, you guys. And I'm so, like, I'm over halfway. Oh no, maybe I'm not over halfway because I still have sleeves. But I'm pretty damn close, you know what I mean? So I want it done, but at the same time, I'm mad at it and just think, that it needs to hibernate because I spent an entire evening knitting on this and ended at the same point I was when I started. So I don't know, I, we'll see. I ain't promising nothing. The Seuss is why I drink. Like I need an excuse. <laughs> and wait until you hear about this. I was feeling adventurous the other, the other night, right? So I get my Susu out, for those new viewers, I've been working on this for a while and I was basically pissed at it and I haven't touched it in a long time. So I'm like, I'm gonna get the Susu out. So I get it out, I look at it, immediately find a mistake and was super pissed and put it back in its bag. <laughs> I still am mad at it. Arr! I am leaving that, you guys, it's right here here again some of you your eyes probably twitching but I don't care I'm not ripping that back if you're wearing it I'm the only one that's going to know that it's there I don't give a shit famous last words I'm going to try and make it a priority at least a little bit at a time even if I can pump out a couple rows I'm at least doing something on it right I have the back done for new viewers that's the back right there all I have is the front it is not hard it's not hard it is so slow. Next whip, you guys are gonna be so proud of me. Look, you guys, it's the front. This is the last time you saw it, this little dragonfly. I got that much done. I have all the cabling done. I am at the point where I'm like right there. My next thing is I am casting off for that little V right there and, and going the rest of the way up. So I'm done with cabling. The end is in sight. What's next? Sous, sous. Susu, my susu. Oh, you guys, my susu. I am so close to being finished with it and I continue to hate it. What the hell? I'm on Sleeve Island. Here's the thing, got the front done. I joined and I started the sleeve. Look at there, it's a sleeve. 
you do like this thing and this will go around the back, but I'm waiting to attach it until after. Use the imagination, people. If you look, it's not been blocked, so you know, use your imagination there. If you look at the hashtag of this sweater or the project pages, which I did not do, obviously, before I knit this sweater, I love the model sweater. There are some other projects that I'm not in love with, and I think a lot of it has to do with gauge. This part is where that gauge comes into play. I think mine is okay if I block it out that way. I don't know. I will see. <sighs> you guys, this sweater. I wish I had the digits I would call her. <laughs> I think I'm gonna like it. Maybe it'll be like a big cozy, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully we'll all see one day that sweater be finished. Dude, it is M and F and off the needles. M and F and F to the O. I'm just saying. Here it is, what do you think, huh? The last time you guys saw this, this is stitch marker from my friend Kathy that she sent me for my birthday. This is where it was the last time y'all saw it, right? So I got this sleeve done, this sleeve done, and I seamed it up the sides. Okay, where do I begin? First off, I don't like this deep of a V. I wish it was shallower. I really, hold on, let me sit down. I think I should have knitted the smaller size. I think it might be too big. Will it work? Yes. I just think it's a little roomier than what I'd like. I have the hardest time with sizing, you guys. What I think I have learned is that I tend to make my sweaters too big. I am a large in shirts and I am a size 12 in like pants, dresses. Sometimes I can do 10 in a dress because I'm a real hippie. I've noticed that with some of my knits, I wish that I would have gone down a size. So you know that I want to knit the Nordiska. I am going to knit down a size than I would normally knit. So what I think I've learned from this is I think that if it is fitted or like doesn't have any ease or maybe negative ease, I would do the size large typically. And inches wise, I usually look for like a 38. So this sweater called for 20 inches of positive ease. So I went to the medium, which is what that would have called for. I wish I would have done the small, which I am not a small in anything. I'm, I'm not, you know, you hear people say, well, I'm big boned. I am big boned. Like if I, I don't think it's physically possible for me to be a size six unless I was a skeleton. Like I, I have a larger bone structure. So I am, I am a solid large. So it, it always perplexes me when stuff's too big because I don't feel like I pick too big of a size, but I definitely would want to go down on this sweater if any of y'all are looking at knitting it, which I know that some of you have expressed that you like it and would. The other thing that you probably saw from my little compilation video that I put together, hopefully you liked that, I debated on doing that, but then I thought it, it's been such a long journey with this sweater and there's been so much love and hate with it that I thought that it would be sort of fun to recap the journey. But from what you saw in that, there was this yarn over issue that has has pretty much, it, it looks okay. Like it it doesn't look odd, I don't think. Now, it does call, sorry, I'm all like up in your grill. It does call for this to be steam blocked and that's all I did. Uh, it is, I mentioned before, a very heavy sweater and I definitely don't want it any bigger. So I am sort of scared to wash it, which I know eventually I will have to wash it, but mm, I will, we'll see. Because of the size, Sorry, hold on. 
because of the positive ease of the sweater, while I wanted to wear it over dresses, I feel like, I, I don't know. This is actually kind of cute. Like, I kind of like this. I was worried when I put it on before that it looked like too big and sloppy. I am actually going to wear this home to Ohio tomorrow, but I am going to wear um, jeans and like a fitted tank top underneath so that you can actually see the positive ease. Whereas here, you don't know, like, like I don't need, <laughs> I don't need to look bigger around the middle. So there's going to be some styling things here, but it's off the needles, you guys. I mean, I feel like I want to sleep in it, kind of. I'm going to try and wear it with every single outfit that I possibly can because it was such a long journey. Dan's like, well, why don't you frog it then? And I'm like, I ain't frogging shit. I'm going to sleep in this bitch. This took me almost a year. I started this in July. I will wear it and I will like it. Those are my FOs. You know what that means. Now we on the whips. Whips. I have a new cast on. Actually, I have a couple new casts on since y'all saw it last. Which one do I want to show you? Decisions are the worst. Let me show you this one. I have put this in my home row fiber company bag, which I love. FYI, these are my all time favorite colors, especially together. I absolutely love them. Ooh, and it matches this even. Isn't it cool? This is housing my Nubbleton, which is how I said it last week, or la was it last week, two weeks ago, whenever. Okay, okay, free pattern. This is for Clint's sister who is pregnant. And I was educated on this word, which I'm so glad that I was. That's like the whole, I'm so glad that y'all educate me because that is one of the big, big reasons that I did this podcast or I like doing this podcast is because I learn from you. I think a lot of people like that they learn from podcasters, but I love that I can like mispronounce words and ask you questions and I get answers and it's really cool. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Like always, if I need corrected, if I'm saying something wrong, I love to learn always. So always let me know. This word is apparently German, and in German, they pronounce the K, which would be Knubbelchen. Knubbel stands for like lump or bump, and Chen is little. So it's like a little, a little lump, a little bump. Maybe they're talking about his head. Anyway, let me show you. I'm this far. Isn't it cute? Okay, this actually, I should have done this before I started. This is ready to be bound off. So I have this arm and then I don't know where it goes. Maybe, I don't know what dire what the directions are after this. I know that the head gets stuffed and there's a hat and these are like knotted. Yeah, those are knotted at the end. So I'm pretty close. This will be done the next time you see it. My next whip. This is not a project bag, but I use these bags as project bags. I own a lot of these bags. I mean, I am a special unicorn, but they're not all the special unicorn bags. These guys are by Blue Q. That's the bottom of the bag. They are awesome. They sell these bags. You've probably seen their socks. They have some like snarky socks. I have a ton of these bags. I have, I think they call them the shoppers. They're the big bags. They're, it's made out of this like weirdo plastic stuff, like recycled, does it say on it what it is? Woven from 95% post consumer materials. 1% of the sale of this bag supports environmental initiatives around the globe. Over $300,000 since 2009. These bags are absolutely awesome. I do not carry a purse. I am not a purse carrier. I have a purse like a side, like if I go to a festival or something, I'll carry a purse. But daily, like back and forth to work, I have way too much shit. I have like all my knitting. I have 
I just have a lot of stuff. And I carry one of their totes. They have a zip up tote. And then they also have these bags that are shoppers. And they are the bags that we take to the grocery store. I love, love, love them. They are awesome. They are very inexpensive. They last a long time. And when they do get funky, they're cheap enough to just buy another bag. And then you have like a brand new bag. So I love them a lot. And this one is currently housing my next whip. I have some toes. Oop, I'm dropping things. Look at this, <laughs> isn't it cool? This is my Mad Fuzzy yarn. You guys, work horse. You can just tell these are going, what is up with me in my yellow right now? Must be my color of the year. You can tell that these are going to hold the F up. These will last forever, I just know it. You know, I've talked about my girl Marta before, sorry, that's. There we go. You know I've talked about my girl Marta before, Mad Fuzzy. This is the Sister Golden Hair Surprise colorway on her Pretty Tough base, which is 80% East Frisian wool, 20% Starfire nylon. I started these, I'm not, I, I hate how the toe looks like that, like so pointy. What did I do? I cast on, I cast on less than I normally do. I think my typical vanilla. Okay, let me back up. This is thanks to Zakia, who has a podcast. I'll put it's Lady Wing. Late. I'm sorry, Zakia. I've forgotten. Lady Wing. It's right here. Yeah. On her last podcast, she is knitting with Mad Fuzzy which I knew was the next yarn that I wanted to cast on. Then she was knitting the Hermione socks. And I'm like, that sounds perfect. I've only knit the Hermione, Hermione socks once, uh, and it was a sample knit for a store. So I don't own any myself. So I messaged her and I was like, okay, Miss Enabler, I'm now casting on my Mad Fuzzy yarn and I'm making them Hermione's, which you can't tell but they are. I, I just have, whatever, you can't see it at all. There's like three rows of pattern. I think everyone is very familiar with the Hermione socks. They'll be linked down below. It is a free pattern. And of course I am altering it because I like to break the rules. I like to at a time toe up. The pattern calls for top down. So I did the toe a little differently than my normal. I was just uh, experimenting. My normal two at a time is Judy's Magic Cast On, and I think I cast on 16, and I only did 12 on this one, and it's a little pointy. But when I put it on my foot, it's fine. Like you can't see, like it, it conforms to my foot really nice. It just looks weird as a sock. But I'm, I might go back to my 16s, we'll see. The other thing about this is, let me show you the cake. I was thinking by just looking at it that it was going to be a light fingering. Isn't that color so pretty? I have my socks on it, you know how I do. I've been asked about my, I call these um, yarn condoms, which I totally got from, I think Michelle off Naughty Knitwits calls them yarn condoms. You can buy them off Etsy. I, I don't know if they call them yarn socks or yarn condoms or whatever they are, but you can buy like cute ones. I just had a sock that was missing its mate. So I just like cut the leg off and cut the foot off and sewed the bottom shut. I've had viewers ask me where I got them. So you can buy them if you're crafty at all and you have a missing sock, just use that. But back to this, I thought it was going to be a light fingering. So I started on a size one and I have even knit socks on zeros. I typically do a zero or a one. I used to knit on twos and they, were, they weren't they were loose, 
but I wanted it. I I wanted a tighter gauge. So that that's when I dropped down to one, sometimes zeros. These actually are like the looks are deceiving. It looks like a light fingering weight, but when you're knitting it, it really isn't. My hands hurt. Like it was not enjoyable for me to knit these toes. They are very dense. I have not uh, counted how many stitches per inch it is, but I did just do the toes on my ones and then I bumped up to twos once it started with the pattern and I like it so much better. Now I obviously haven't, I only have like three rows into the pattern, but I'm liking it now that I've switched up to twos. My next whip is kind of boring. I'm, this is, I've gotten stuff done, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. If y'all wanna know more about my Ives sweater, you can look at past episodes. I'm just going to show you a little bit about it. This is the Ives sweater by Jared Flood. I am on the sleeves. I was on Sleeve Island last time you saw this. Here it is. I still need to do, well wait, here's the front. I still need to do the bottom, the hem. You saw it here. This is my progress keeper from Barbara from Flame and Fiber. And I'm not sure why that's there. Oh, I was measuring, so I knew how long to go. Okay, so the last time you saw it, I was here. So I finished this sleeve and I am here on this sleeve. And then the next thing is either picking up for the band or picking up for the neck. That's all I have left. Some of you may have seen my next whip on Instagram. I am also keeping my stuff for this in a blue Q bag. I love these things so much, you guys. The one thing that I didn't mention, if you sign up, sign up for their email thing, if you want these bags, they're, they're seriously super cheap. If you sign up for their email list, they, they're not annoying and they didn't, do not bombard you with like a bunch of stuff. It's just every once in a while, they will send you like one of their new socks or a sale. And their sales are super fun because if you spend, I think it's like $20 or $25, they will send you $35 worth of other stuff. So that's the only time I buy my bags. Whenever I get the email that they're having that sale, I will stock up on my bags and then I get a bunch of, it's like a, it's fun surprise stuff. They have dish towels and socks and other bags and it's just sort of fun to see what they throw in there for you. I went on a yarn crawl last year. Some of you may remember, you OGs you out went. there. We went. Dan and I went on a yarn crawl last year because Dan loves yarn crawls. Last year, Dan and I went on a yarn crawl down in the Indy area and we went to a shop called Always In Stitches. I have a video of the yarn crawl. I'll link it if you wanna see it. Always In Stitches is part of that video. I went in thinking that it was going to be a yarn shop and here they had all sorts of needle craft stuff. They had cross stitch patterns that were awesome. This one being one of them. Uh, this is Stacy Nash Primitives Moon Moth Pin Keep. She is on Etsy, I will link her below. I'll also link Always In Stitches. I'm not sure if they have an online store or not. I will tell you the people down there are so, so nice, so flipping nice. So I've had this for over a year and it's one of those things that I've been wanting to start for a long, long time, but it was never the right time. Now that I finished my Susu, I've started this. So Always In Stitches was so sweet. We went down and we videoed, obviously the yarn crawl video, and somebody told, well, I mean, I told them that I was doing it and I must have given them my card, not thinking. I mean, I give people my card quite a bit and figure that they don't ever watch, you know? They're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, somebody down there watched it and we went back the next weekend, I went back with friends because we went to 
did I say always in stitches and is in Noblesville? I might not have. So Noblesville is north of Indianapolis, but I think it's like a suburb. It's real close. So we went to Indy to a button show I did with friends and they had seen the show and gifted me the show. They saw my show. They saw the podcast and saw that I purchased this and I mentioned in there that I was going down the next weekend to buy the floss and they gifted it to me. I don't know if you, this is Simply Shaker. Now, I know that some of you are not cross stitchers, but we are multi-craftual. Is that a word? Multi-craftual? A lot of us are. Uh, Zakia, who I mentioned earlier, Lady Wings, Lady Wing. God, Zakia, I'm so sorry. I'm going to read it and be like, duh, I knew that. She is a cross stitcher and cross stitchers for you only knitters or crocheters or fiber people, they have a thing on YouTube called Floss Tube where like we have knitting podcasts, they have floss tube. So if you go on YouTube, type in floss tube, that's going to be all your cross stitch people. Zakia is also a knitter. So she has, she does knitting podcasts and she does floss tube podcasts, floss tube shows, floss tube videos. Mm. She does cross stitching and she does knitting. So I know that she if I have any questions, I actually messaged her when I started this and was like, hey, just so you know, I might need some help here <laughs> because I'm fairly new. Uh, Y'all know that I did my, you can't tell that that's what that is, but that thing right there is my labyrinth cross stitch. That was on like 16 or 18 Ada. And what that means is there's like 16 or 18 little cross stitch squares in an inch, okay? This, and Ada is like a weird material. I'm not a cross stitcher, so I don't know. It's like real thick and you can see the holes very well. That's what a beginner would start out on, like a 14 inch Ada or four, 14 count Ada, something like that. This calls for a 36 linen, 36 count linen which means there are 36 holes in an inch. Well, I'm thinking, a you'll hear cross stitchers say that they can only go down, they can only like go to so high of a number because it's hard to see. Well, I don't need readers yet. I mean, I'm sure that I will need readers, but I don't need readers yet. And I picked out this fabric, which I also showed you on that video. It is 32 inch Ada. Isn't it pretty? Not Ada, linen, Thir and it's not inch, good grief. 32 count, I think is what they say. You can't see it, but there are little crosses in this linen. And well here, this is how far I've gotten. It goes right there. My camera will not focus probably that small. This was a bitch to get started, it is really hard to see. And I was trying to stitch in hand and what stitching in hand is, sorry for those of you who are just knitters and don't know anything about cross stitch or don't give a hoot about cross stitch. This thing is called a Q-snap. Normally people will, not normally, muggles to the cross stitching world, which I almost am, typically think of embroidery hoops that that's what they stitch on right because that's what they always have in the period pieces these are kind of like the new age you know these things come off and then it's on it looks like that it's basically just pvc pipe right and it holds your fabric taut well you can stitch in hand which means you just hold the cloth so you don't have to mess with one of these and you can like shove it in a bag or whatever. It, it's just smaller and more condensed, right? So I really wanted to stitch in hand. I, th I could not, I was super frustrated because I couldn't see. 
So I got with Zakia and I was like, hey, well, I messaged her on Instagram and I was like, hey, you know, this is happening. I'm like super frustrated. I, it's so, so hard to see. I really, do, it surprises me that it's this hard to see. And she said, how about you try a Q-snap instead of in hand? And the Q-snap, which not right now because I've messed it up now, but the Q-snap makes the fabric taut enough, taut, taunt. Taut, taut, you taunt someone, fabric is taut, right? Because it's spread out a little bit, it's easier to see the cross hatches as far as where your, your needle's supposed to go, where your stitches are supposed to go. So once I put it on the Q-snap, it got a lot better. Um, I still want to stitch in hand one day. I don't think that I want to do 32 linen anymore. I definitely won't be doing 36 like Jiminy Christmas. I had really good lighting. Uh, there are like head, they're kind of like jeweler's lights. And there was one on Amazon for like 16 or $18 that I looked at before I got a hold of Zakia. And she messaged me back and said that I might want to try one. And I was like, dude, I was already looking at one of those. But, you know, I don't know. I'm a knitter. I like to cross stitch, but knitting's my, you know, my not craft of choice because I like everything. I don't know if I want to spend $18 on a headlamp that I might use once a year. I mean, I've had this for a year, you know. So we'll see. I I don't know. Once I got started, it it got a lot easier. And this is really addicting. You can't tell, but I have worked on this a lot. So hopefully there will be some some good progress on this the next time you see it. That's it for my knitting, guys. Um, I will mention the giveaways. Those are still going. The Show Chevy Stuff giveaway is really cool to see all your crafting spaces. I've really been enjoying that. There's some neat ones. There's just cozy places that make you want to sit down and hang out and craft there. So I've really been enjoying that hashtag. For that giveaway, you can either enter on Instagram using the hashtag ShowChevyStuff or there is a thread in the Ravelry group, which I'll link below. The second giveaway is the book make along is what I'm calling it, which that means we are so prone to just go to Ravelry and search for knitting patterns or crochet patterns or any sort of patterns because it's easy, right? And we all have these books in our library, these pattern books that we rarely go to. So I want you to pick a pattern out of a book. That one is a Ravelry entry. You can hashtag it on Instagram and I will look at, like search the hashtags. You guys can search the hashtags if you wanna see what people are making for that. Uh, hashtag Chevy's book Mal, M-A-L, cause it is a make long, anything out of a book that has a pattern. But to enter for prizes, that one will be through Ravelry. There is a chatter thread and there is an FO thread. I am going to, I got this on deep discount a long time ago. I haven't picked exactly which pattern yet. I need to kind of take a gander at the patterns and my stash. I have some leftover stuff that I am going to, I, I think I might make Ditto a sweater. Ditto does not have a sweater. Olive has a few sweaters. Ditto has a sweatshirt, it's like a hoodie, but I think Ditto needs a sweater and I have enough scrap yarn that I can give him one. So I haven't picked one yet, but that's what mine's going to be. I'm thinking maybe the end of summer for this one. I don't have end dates on anything. I of course will let you know. So those of you who are dragging your feet, uh, for instance, I know the show Chevy stuff giveaway. Some of you have said that you're waiting until you like clean up your area so you can get pictures. And some of you have said I've motivated you to do that. So that's awesome. Whatever, whatever's got to happen, right? So that's really it. I usually end with not knitting stuff and I really don't have anything. I guess, okay, some people aren't into books. 
and I'm not gonna do books every time, but since I really don't have anything else, I'll end with some of the stuff that I'm reading or the things that I've just read, whatever. A couple books that I've just finished. For those of you who watch Game of Thrones and are going to be super sad when it is over, I just finished a series, ex excuse me, not a series, a trilogy uh, called The Remnant Chronicles. I can't even remember what the three book titles are, but it's The Remnant Chronicles by Mary Pearson. The story is, it's not like, it, <clears throat> It's not like Game of Thrones, but it's like Game of Thrones. I know that sounds so dumb. It's like kingdoms and kings and queens, but I think it might be a YA trilogy, which I I like the YA trilogies quite a bit. And I also like trilogies. I like it when something ends. I, I'm not really a fan of things without endings, like soap operas, like when they're on book 22, I, I want there to be an end. One of my favorite favorite collections is the Lunar Chronicles by I think it's Marissa Meyer like I love I love that entire series collection whatever it's called I think there's like five or six books and I like them all the Remnant Chronicles is a trilogy and then there's a half book in there somewhere I listen to all my books on audible that is about in this land wherever they live it's called Morrigan and they believe that their every first daughter that's born has a gift, which not to spoil it, but the gift is just like, you know how like when you know something and the hair stands up on the back of your neck or you start to like you get that sick feeling like something bad's going to happen. That's basically what the gift is. So those of you who are turned off by like weirdo sci-fi stuff, which I am not, I love that stuff. Um, the the gift is there but it's not you know over the top or anything there is this girl named leah she's the princess and the firstborn daughter her parents have married her off to a prince in another kingdom and she is very feisty and is like you i want to marry who i want to marry and you can't tell me what to do and she takes off and the story goes from there and it's pretty good. So if you like books that have sort of a venture, like it has a Game of Thrones feel as far as the kingdom stuff and the swords and that kind of thing, but it's not like blood and guts and gore like Game of Thrones. Not that Game of Thrones is gore. Well, kind of, maybe. you know what I mean. I'm telling you too much about it. It's good if you like that kind of thing. Look it up and see if you like it, whatever. The other thing that I just finished reading Audible does this thing where every month, it, it's new, I think. I, I feel like it just started happening. The last few months, I've been getting emails that you get two free, there's like five books or six books, and you get to choose two of them for free every month. The first month, I didn't really like any of them, so I didn't even do it. This month, I wanted more than two, so I did choose two, and the one that I've read is The Wild Heart of Stevie Nicks by something Sheffield, Rob Sheffield. The Wild Heart of Stevie Nicks by Rob Sheffield. So those of you who are Audible members, that is a freebie. And it's short for an audiobook. I, I would say an average audiobook is like nine to 12 hours. Shorter for me is seven to eight hours. That's a pretty short book. This is only like three hours. So it's not a big time commitment, but if you are into Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac, it was really good. I have been jamming to Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks for like the last week. Yeah, it, it was really good. So if you like that, I would suggest grabbing that as one of your freebies if you're an Audible customer. That's it guys, that's all she wrote. Dan and I are gonna go for a walk. It's nice here. It looks like it wants to rain, but it hasn't yet. It's supposed to thunderstorm later. So we're gonna go for a quick walk. We've been pulling Olive in the wagon so that the whole family can go. Uh, it's been really nice to have not rainy weather. I feel like the rain has really been, the rain's really been on our nerves lately. We, I feel like we've had a lot of it. So it's been nice to actually enjoy the weather. That being said, 
Like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that happy horse shit if you haven't done it already. And until we meet again, cheers.